Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to start a new chapter which is NMR spectroscopy. Before this, we studied UV visible spectroscopy and IR spectroscopy in organic spectroscopy. So, today let's start with the first lecture from nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy <coughs> it is a physical phenomena in which nuclei in a magnetic field absorb and re-emit electromagnetic radiation through which structure of an organic compound can be determined in nmr spectroscopy the most important things that we should no is nuclear spin and the external magnetic field electromagnetic radiation and the spectrum of NMR so these four things are important and we should know these parameters and we will discuss these parameters in detail the first one is the nuclear spin Nuclear spin is denoted with I. It is like uh, when electron spinning occurs, we denote spinning of electron with spin quantum number S. But for nuclear spin, we denote it with I. It is due to spinning of the protons and neutrons inside the nucleus. So overall, we say that nuclear spin occurs. It is nuclear spin quantum number which is I and it is the it is due to the presence of proton and neutron inside the nucleus. The angular momentum of nuclear, uh, nucleus is I I plus 1 under root H over 2 pi and magnetic field is produced due to this spinning of the nucleus. So nuclei with odd atomic mass or atomic number will have net nuclear spin. But here we are going to summarize the nuclear spin and its effectiveness depending on number of protons and number of neutrons. So first we take an example when we have even number of protons and even number of neutrons. The examples of this is carbon 12 having atomic mass of 12 and atomic number 6 or oxygen 8 and 16. So the spin quantum number for these elements will be 0. So such type of such type having quantum num spin quantum number 0 will be NMR inactive and same in the case when the number of protons are odd and number of neutrons are also odd like here we have an example of nitrogen 7 14 and deuterium with atomic number 1 and atomic mass number 2 the spin quantum number will be 1 2 3 and so on so it is the it is an integer but again it is NMR inactive so in both cases if we have the spin quantum number nuclear spin quantum number 0 or an integer the NMR signal or NMR effect is 0 so we cannot consider these for NMR active signals now if we have even number of protons and odd number of neutrons like here we have carbon 6 and 13 having odd number of neutrons or here we have oxygen with odd number of neutrons oxygen 17 which is the isotope of oxygen 16 and here is the isotope of carbon 12 and uh, here we also have taken this but this proton have has even odd number of proton and and it has only one proton 
So in this case, the spin quantum number will be half an integer, like 1 by 2, 3 by 2, or 5 by 2, etc. And this type of spin, nuclear spin, which gives nuclear spin quantum number in half integers, will be NMR active. Again, if we have odd number of protons and even number of neutrons, so in both cases, if we have even odd combination, like here we have nitrogen 15, which is isotope of nitrogen 14, and fluorine 19, which is an isotope of fluorine, and phosphorus 31. So all of these cases, the integer nuclear spin quantum number will be not 0, not in 1, 2, 3. So here we have in the NMR active signals. So even odd combination of protons and neutrons will provide us active NMR signals for these elements. Here we are going to explain it, uh, that how it, occur, it, it, it occurs. Like here, now we are going to take example where we have even number of protons and even number of neutrons. So protons with even number will be the spin of the both protons will be paired up like plus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and here even neutrons will also be paired up. So the pairing of this spin, the spin quantum number will be 0. So overall nuclear spin will be 0. If we take an example of deuterium having odd proton and odd number of neutrons so here will be unpaired spin like here we have shown this is the spin the spin is unpaired but in both cases the spin will be plus 1 by 2 and plus 1 by 2 so both have same direction the spin quantum number will be 1 and if the one is plus 1 by 2 and other is minus 1 by 2 like we have in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction the nuclear spin quantum number will be 0 so again if we have 1 2 3 4 or 0 the we have NMR inactive signals now we are going to take example of even odd combination <coughs> for example carbon 13 it has even number of protons and odd number of neutrons so in this case, six protons will be paired up with each other and they will cancel the effect of each other. But here in case six protons, six neutrons will be paired up and one neutron will be unpaired. So due to unpaired, this will give plus one by two or minus one by two. So the nuclear spin quantum number will be one by two. So this will give NMR active signals. Again, in the case of phosphorus 31, which has odd and even combination. So during odd and even combination, there will be either one unpaired proton or one unpaired neutron. And this is the reason that overall, we have effective nuclear spin. So we call it NMR active nuclear spin. The nuclei with half integer spin, that is in fractions, are NMR active nuclei. They have odd even combinations of protons and neutrons. So they have net charge due to unequal number of protons and neutrons. What are the different possible orientations of nucleus spin? Nucleus spin will have possible orientations of 2i plus 1. For example, in case of proton, it is 1 by 2, nuclear spin is 1 by 2. So 2i means 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1. So it will give 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So there will be two possible orientations for spin, like clockwise and anticlockwise. In the case of carbon 13, again it will be two orientations. If we have integer nuclear spin quantum number like here if we have 1 so it will be 3 so in that cases it will give 3 orientations 2 
clockwise and anticlockwise and third will be the perpendicular to the these spins now here we have shown the nuclear spin like here we have anticlockwise spin so anticlockwise spin will give the nuclear magnet nuclear field around it and the direction of the nuclear field will be upward from the right hand rule so from right hand rule it will be spin up and it will be denoted with plus 1 by 2 and it is the anti clockwise spin of this nuclear and in case of nuclear spin which is clockwise so in clockwise direction the direction of the overall direction of the nuclear spin or the nuclear magnetic field which is produced due to spinning of this nucleus it will be downward direction or down spin and it will be minus 1 by 2 so the overall magnetic field which is produced has a direction from south to north and it will represent it can be represented with dipole moment so the spinning of the nucleus creates a dipole due to the induced magnetic field and one pole will be south and other pole will be north pole like a bar magnet the spinning charge nucleus generates a magnetic field around itself like a bar magnet so here we have shown how the spinning nucleus produces a magnetic field around itself here we have a nucleus which contains positive charge due to protons so this charge body when it spins it will produce a magnetic field around itself and this magnetic field have a direction from south to north and this here is the effective magnetic field around the around this nucleus which is produced so it acts like a bar magnet same if we have a bar magnet with south and north pole it produces same kind of magnetic field so the two poles will be generated and due to these two poles the nuclear spin will have a effective dipole moment now we are going to discuss that what is external magnetic field or what are the effect what is the effect of external magnetic field on nuclear spin so let's start that if we have an external magnetic field so in presence of external magnetic field they interact with the magnetic field and arrange themselves either along with the direction of magnetic field or against the direction of magnetic field for example in absence of the external magnetic field the spinning or the nuclei will be degenerate and their spin will be degenerate either it is alpha or beta spin they will be in all directions so they will be they will be present randomly but in case when external magnetic field b naught is applied the nuclei will arrange themselves either along the magnetic field and the nuclei which arrange themselves along the magnetic field they are called alpha spin state and they are greater in number whereas the nuclei with which which align themselves against the magnetic field they are at high energy level and they are called as beta spin state so now they become non-degenerate nuclear spins states because of the di differentiation between the two spin states due to low energy level and high energy level so the nuclei which arrange themselves along the magnetic field they are at low energy level and they are greater in number whereas the nuclei having high energy they arrange themselves against the magnetic field 
and they are called as beta species.